Over the last few videos, we got started with creating our first pipeline, which was code red project CI. Uh, we learned what is the difference between pipeline and releases, wherein pipeline is more of a, uh, is a platform to build your code and which can be shipped onto a release. Uh, in the release, we created a bunch of environments, dev, non-prod and prod, and using the uh, task, we, we, we created our pipeline uh, releases rather. We had a bunch of tasks available over here, bash, uh, then Terraform task, which we downloaded and we created a bash task as well. Then we bifurcated the release into a different environment. Uh, pipelines are basically a way to build your code, which can be shipped onto these environment using the release pipeline. This is a classic way of creating the pipeline and the easiest way of creating pipeline and releases in Azure. However, Azure recommends you to use the YAML pipeline because YAML majority of the features which is released first gets into the YAML first and then the uh, classic pipeline and Azure recommends you to use YAML as well for creating the pipeline. Moreover, majority of the new Edge CI CD technologies be it GitLab or GitHub uses the YAML as their de facto configuration pipeline. So YAML not only is applicable to your Azure pipeline, but in case you're using some other tool like GitHub or GitLab to create a CI CD pipeline, you could uh, use YAML over there as well. Let's get started. So for the first thing first, I'm going to open my code editor, which is Visual Studio Code Editor. I've got my terminal fired up already. The first thing first, I'm going to create a file name as Azure pipelines dot yaml and make sure that it's in the same repo which you want to use to ship it onto your environment so azure devops is my project name which we have been using so far in last couple of videos as well in the same route i'm going to create an azure hyphen pipelines dot yaml first thing first uh, it's going to give you an auto completion feature as well if you're using a visual studio code because it's one of the products from microsoft so they kind of integrate very well the first thing you uh, give a parameter so in yaml the colon the first part on the left hand side of the colon is the key which is going to be the name uh, name of your pipeline i'm going to name it as build and deployment rather all right, and then if you do a control space, it's gonna give you some features, uh, rather parameters, and you see that on the left-hand side of your colon, you have got the variables name. Uh, you can define the variables right over here. I don't have any variable to use at the moment. I'm gonna keep it blank, but there are some of the by default variables available, like system.debug, which Azure gives you by default so you can use that as well this is going to enable the debugging log for you and then the next uh, part comes is the trigger on which repo you want to make sure that whenever you make any changes your pipeline should be triggered on which branch you want to make sure that your trigger whenever you push any code on that particular branch your pipeline should be triggered the trigger is basically a uh, a point wherein Azure DevOps to understand whenever you push any code on a particular branch or a repo, it should be automatically able to build the code for you. So I'm going to put it as a batch as true, and then I'm going to try in the branches. So I'm going to include or exclude so I'm going to include master which means whenever I push any changes to my master branch I the CI or CD pipeline would be automatically YAML would be triggered automatically if you want to exclude some of the pipeline branch let's suppose you're working on a feature branch you don't want feature branch to be feature branch whenever you push any code you don't want feature uh, branch to be triggered which means any developer who pushes any code to with this name, the pipeline won't be triggered because features branch are generally, maybe it is used for testing or 
or in dev purpose and you don't want the pipeline to trigger every time somebody pushes the code and what you want is every time somebody pushes the code to the master branch your pipeline should be triggered all right the next part is pool pool is the build agent remember uh, when we used the pipeline when we used the release it had a bunch of different virtual machines the agents um, and that's what the pool is all about I'm gonna type in the VM image just in case just to recap give you a recap if you go to the pipeline go to the releases edit and if you go you see the agent pipeline and then you had different pipeline uh, agents available Mac OS Ubuntu Windows so that's what are we gonna do we're gonna mention it as Ubuntu latest so it's gonna pick the latest version of your Ubuntu virtual machine now comes is the stages so how the hierarchy in YAML works is in Azure DevOps YAML works is first you've got a pipeline I'm just gonna I'm just showing you the hierarchy this is not actual configuration so first you you've got your pipeline which is the Azure pipelines dot YAML and then you have got stage maybe stage A and then you've got a job and underneath job you can have different steps now this step could include a bash script or it could use any other task and you could have a multiple multiple stages you could have stage B and underneath the stage B you could have again the same process so you've got pipeline first which is Azure pipeline and then you've got your stages and underneath the stages you've got your job and then steps we're gonna learn them one by one so I just wanted to show you how the hierarchy kind of works so that you're not confused so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna define the stages so stages our first stage build Azure pipeline give it a dis display name I'm probably gonna give it the same display name and then you've got the jobs and underneath the job you can jobs you can have multiple job this is going to be a build build of rather keep it simple as build and then the display name display name probably give it as same build as your pipeline and then we've got these steps underneath the step you can want to check out the repo you want to persist your credentials it's just going to be true and then you want to make sure it auto cleans itself and then you can use the task so task are are set of sequential steps which you want to perform in your pipeline when you when we created the release pipeline these were our tasks when we created the uh, pipeline we had few tasks available over there as well so these are nothing but tasks and that's what we're going to define in our pipeline as well so consider this task as equivalent to this particular task and what in our case what we're going to do is we're going to use the publish publish pipeline artifact which is going to be like whenever it builds whenever it processes the code it's going to publish it I want to put it as a display name which is publish terraform code and then we've got the inputs inputs gonna be path remember we had some of the by default parts available which we used in our pipeline as well system dot default working directory and 
that's what we're going to use over here as well so we're going to put it as a system dot default working directory and then the artifact name give it a name terraform build artifact artif cool so this was so you could have multiple stages in multiple stages beneath one stages so what we could do is we just have we just defined one stage now what we want to do is i want to define one more stage so what i'm going to do is i'm going to define it as a stage and then what i want is i want to download the artifact which is built above so whatever which has been built over here i want to download it so the same steps you start with the stage and then you go to the display name you say download terraform artif and then you kind of define start defining the jobs underneath it gonna be a job which is going to be just give it a name display name gonna be probably build or download code cool and then we have got the steps and underneath the step we've got the task and if you do a control space so you've got the steps and if you do a control space you would see that it starts giving you by default task now if you were to perform the same task using the GUI what you would what you would do is you could click on it and start searching your task name so what I'm, I'm uh, had it been a GUI what I would have done is I would have used a pipeline task download pipeline task I'm gonna do the same I'm gonna search for a download download pipeline artifact and it kind of gives you the version which we want to use i'm going to use the latest version which is 2 so i'm going to download the artifact which was published over here on my build machine and then i'm going to put in some inputs and then i have the artifact name which i want to download i want to download the same artifact name give it right over here build version I want to make sure that it downloads the latest version and then where do you want it to download I want to download path small typo right over here download path and I am gonna want to make sure that it gets downloaded in the default working directory all right that's pretty much all let's try to review what we have done we have given a name and then we have defined a variable however we're not using any of the variable at the moment however we're going to use in our next few the videos then the trigger trigger is basically the point which you want to make sure that when you want azure devops pipeline to be triggered in this case we want it to trigger whenever something is pushed through the master branch pool is the build agent on which machine you want the pipeline to be built and then the stages we've got multiple stages the stage one and then the stage two all right so let's do a get status we have got the addition right over here so i'm gonna add it get add get commit all right we haven't got the pipeline right over here so i'm gonna put the pipeline right over here if we do an ls we should have the azure pipeline now if we do a git add and then do a git commit hyphen m azure devops pipeline and then get push
now if you go ahead and go to our repo we should have the yaml pipeline right over here so we've got the changes if you go to the pipeline and create a new pipeline right over here go to azure get and that's the project existing pipeline yes we do have an existing pipeline already all right that's not the correct project go back to the pipeline again click on the new pipeline azure yaml azure devops exist existing azure pipeline and then we've got the path it automatically picks up the yaml what we have and then it continues it validates the pipeline and if you do a run now it's going to let us know if you have any changes or any errors now you see that we have the two stages available the first one is the build azure pipeline and then the download terraform pipeline so the first one was first one was build azure pipeline and the second one was download artifact and that's what we have in front of us you would see if you click on one of them you would see that it starts to build them and we have the same artifact what we had using the earlier pipeline as well so if we go to the pipeline again and you see that there are multiple stages now if you click on them you could see that the second stage is being run and it is downloading the pipeline which downloading the artifact from the previous stage and now we could have different at the moment we have only two stages however that's not going to be always we're going to have multiple stages we're going to be learning how to build multiple stages for different environments be it dev non prod or prod and then we're going to ship some of the cool features what we have developed Alright, that's pretty much all for now. I'll see you in a while.